Are you looking to level up your affiliate marketing game? Are you tired of trying things that aren't working or you just want to make sure that whatever plan you have moving forward is going to be successful? Hey there, I'm Brady with brandbuilders.io where we help you build the online business of your dreams. And today I want to talk to you about some affiliate marketing strategies that we've used to take sites from true zero all the way to hundreds of thousands of dollars and six or even seven figure exits. These are the same tactics that you can use that I wish I had had when I was starting affiliate marketing years and years and years ago that can take you from zero dollars per month to really succeeding, really doing well in your online business without having to invest a ton of money, without having to spend a ton of time, and without having to go through several steps of failure that most beginner affiliate marketers struggle with. So hit the like and subscribe buttons below and keep watching to the end to figure out my secret sauce that I wish I had known when I started affiliate marketing. To succeed in affiliate marketing, I think the number one strategy is always going to be avoid losing strategies. And that sounds obvious, but so many affiliate marketers get caught up in this kind of negative loop of doing the wrong thing, believing it doesn't work, spending a lot of time, spending a lot of money, and never seeing a lot of success because they're not doing the right things. The foundation isn't there. So what are the things that you need to avoid? What are the unsuccessful strategies? So first of all, diversified traffic sources is almost always going to be a bad one for you. I think the thing that's kind of plaguing a lot of affiliate marketers is, oh, well, if I just share this on Facebook or this hot new Pinterest strategy or some Facebook ad strategy or whatever, then this is all going to go okay. My first affiliate marketing gig was I was an affiliate for ClickFunnels and I got ads on Facebook and sent people to a landing page and it didn't work. Why didn't it work? Because I was doing the wrong things. Diversified traffic sources are almost always a bad idea. We're going to chat about this later, but your best traffic for affiliate marketing is almost always going to be Google organic traffic. So I have a video that goes into depth on this right here about the best traffic sources for affiliate marketing. Check that out. But the second thing that never works ever, ever, ever is when someone uses the words passive income. Affiliate marketing is not passive income. It is not easy. Now I think it's much easier than working at a job that you hate for 40 years, but it is not easy. It's not something that you turn on today and then you're driving a Lambo in six months. So whenever you're watching YouTube videos, you're listening to podcasts, you're seeing these Facebook ads pop up of, oh, I brought a business from zero to 10 million, like maybe, but I really doubt it. And there are some names out there. If you know them, hey, drop them in the comments. I'm, I shouldn't say them in the video. There are some super scammy people out there. If they're surrounded by beautiful women, if they're filming from like some sort of skyscraper, if they're surrounded by Lambos, then these are probably not people that you want to follow, okay? Kind of catch all. If you hear the words passive income, run. Cut tail and run. There is no such thing as passive income. There's no Fortune 500 company that makes it. There's no billionaire that makes it. Every piece of income you ever make has to be earned. Now there's such thing as residual income that we kind of call passive income. I've got a video right here on how to make passive income, residual income with affiliate marketing. Check that out to figure out what true passive income is and how you can make this kind of money that continues paying you. It's not passive, but it is pretty residual and it's sweet. It's, it's the way that billionaires and Fortune 500 companies are made. So avoid anything that's marketed as super easy. Oh, you just buy ads or you spend 600 bucks and you're good. Avoid anyone who uses passive income and you probably don't need any kind of course. If you're going to get a course, all the great courses I know about today are selling for under a thousand dollars. So now we know what to avoid, what strategies don't work. Let's talk about the ones that do. And the first strategy that works almost every single time, I've never seen it not work is to be focused. There are so many people out there, and I think entrepreneurs are very susceptible to this. The, the grass is always greener syndrome, where we are, or, or the shiny object syndrome, where we're always chasing this better idea, this better niche, this really attractive way of making money. And I just think that the vast majority of the time, it ends up not working out. What we're doing is as good as that idea over there. And so many entrepreneurs get so diversified, they call it, so spread out in multiple niches, multiple projects that none of them end up being very successful because none of them get the full amount of attention. And the reason that spreading out is not a very effective tactic when you're first starting off is because you can't compete with your competition that way. So imagine this, I'm uh, Brady, I've got 10 affiliate sites and each of them gets four hours a week from me. You have one affiliate site and it gets 40 hours per week. You know what's gonna happen is your one affiliate site is going to crush 
my affiliate site that's in the same niche as yours. You are going to absolutely destroy me. Your one site is going to be so much bigger, so much stronger than all 10 of mine put together. So what you want to do when you're first getting started is you want to put all your energy, all your focus, all your effort into one thing, one site, and then go from there. This is a tactic we'll discuss later, but use your first site, your first project, once it's successful, once you're making money to fund later projects. But when you're first getting started, be monogamous, go crazy about your one project. Don't get sucked into grass is always greener or there's something better on the other side. That's just not true. So pick your niche. Do spend a good amount of time selecting your niche. I've got a video right here that's going to show you how I select niches and then go 100% in your niche. Spend time on this. Make sure it's good, but don't get diversified. Don't get spread out. It's not going to help you. You're just going to end up having multiple failures instead of one big success. And then once you do have your niche selected, we need to talk about your traffic source. What traffic sources is the best strategy for your affiliate business? And it's almost always going to be Google organic search traffic. Social is okay sometimes. I think it's a little bit difficult for affiliates and paid ads almost never work for beginners. I just can't recommend them. If you're an expert, we'll chat about this a bit later. So keep watching. Now you might can drive ads to do well as an affiliate, but if you're just starting out, ads are not going to be the game for you. Google organic search traffic is going to be your best friend because it's super easy to find keywords that we can monetize. And the keywords that we need to be targeting as affiliates for Google organic search traffic are best X for Y and X product review. Because the value that we bring to the world as affiliates is we help people save time and make decisions. And when people search something like best X for Y, best chicken coop for broody hen seems to be the example that I keep going back to. In all, in all of my videos. When people search something like that, they know they need a chicken coop and they know they want it to be a chicken coop for broody hens. They just don't know which chicken coop is best for them. So instead of having to go to Amazon and open up 20 different tabs and say like, oh yeah, I, I just don't know which one's right for me, reading the descriptions, reading reviews, they can go to one of our posts and affiliates post who says, Hey, this is the best one overall. This is the best one. If you get more than eight breed hens, this is the best budget one or whatever. The value we bring is we save people time and help them make decisions. So the keywords that people search when they need what we offer are best X for Y and X product review. So do good keyword research. I've got a video right here. that's going to teach you how to do keyword research. And then once you have your keywords produce amazing content. This is the key. This is why affiliate marketing is not easy because you can't just put up this crap spun content that you're getting auto generated, that you're paying a penny per word for, or something like this and expect it to do well. You've got to invest in your content. This is going to be a time investment. This is going to be a money investment, but you have to make it amazing. If your content is not better than your competitors, then you're not going to rank better than your competitors. And if you're not ranking better than your competitors, you're not going to be making any money. So produce amazing content. Your goal as an affiliate should be that no reader ever has to go somewhere else after reading your content. They, your content should answer every question a reader has. It should answer every objection. It should convince the reader to buy, but do so in a gentle and understanding way, not salesy, but in a way that says, Hey, I really want to help you save time and make a decision. So produce amazing content with the keywords that you find and then produce a lot of content. I get people who ask me all the time, like what is the optimal amount of content for an affiliate site? And there is no optimal amount of content at the end of the day. He who has the most content wins. The more content you can put up on your affiliate site, the better you're going to do a marketer who I follow, Miles Beckler, says that it is a race to 1,000. The person who gets to 1,000 pieces of content first wins. That That's the stopping point. That's the ending point. When you're at 50, when you're at 100, that's the starting place. You're just getting going. You need to produce amazing content and you need to produce a ton of it because the more content you produce, the more opportunities you're going to have to end up on the first page of Google to end up making money and to end up doing better than your competition. Another strategy that is successful for affiliate marketers is to build links sometimes. So I take a bit of a contrarian position when it comes to links and SEO. I think if your keyword research is good enough, then a lot of times you're going to end up ranking without backlinks. And the higher you rank without backlinks, the more opportunities you have to gain backlinks without doing any link building, which is really how Google prefers you do it. Now, understand this is coming from a guy who you can pay and my team can do guest post or skyscraper or broken link building for you. Okay. So I can make money if you want to build links. So 
Understand this, I'm saying I don't think you need to build links for your first year if your keyword research is good and if your content is amazing. Because if your keyword research is good and your content is amazing, what you'll find is that plenty of your articles end up ranking on the first page on their own. So what I recommend is let your content sit for a year, let Google figure it out, see that it's the best content out there, see that it's targeting search terms that not many other people are targeting. And if it's not where you want it to be after your first year, then okay, at this point, it's time to build backlink. But for your first year, my opinion is your best return on investment is not going to come from backlinks, it's going to come from more content. So if you've got X dollars a month or X, dollar, X hours per week to invest in this site, your highest return on investment for your first year is probably going to be in more content. Now take that with a grain of salt. I take a contrarian position. If you want some other opinions on that, then check out guys like Authority Hacker who are master link builders and who and who are amazing internet marketers. So great content is an absolute certainty. Backlinking, maybe. But another strategy that I see working every single time is to build an email list. And I just don't see any good reason to put this off and to delay on this. The way to build a good email list is to provide something free. So provide an ebook, provide a how-to course, provide templates, provide SOPs, provide something to get people on your email list. And then you can use that email list to do a few things. So first you can use it to test different affiliate offers. This is what I found on one of my sites is that a, an affiliate program that I was using didn't allow me to send links by email. So what I was able to do was test a new affiliate program. How's my audience going to respond to this? And they responded super well. So I started to put that affiliate program in my articles. But you can also use an affiliate program to keep an eye on who's visiting your website to figure out new things that they want you to talk about. So maybe you're talking about raising chickens, but they also want you to talk about raising ducks or whatever. So use an email list to test your audience, see what they're wanting, see what they're going for, and then provide them with content and affiliate programs that are in line with their desires. You can also use this email list to send people back to your content. So a lot of affiliate marketers want recurring revenue. And the best way to do that is not by being a, an affiliate for software. That does work, but it's super difficult for beginner affiliates. The best way to do that is to build an email list and continue sending them back to your content to build this relationship with the people who are on your email list. Provide them free stuff. Provide them value time and time and time again. Show up for your audience day and night, let them begin to trust you. And then whenever you recommend anything, they're going to be all for that. And it's going to help you with this next strategy, which is starting your own product line. So this is a bit more advanced. I don't recommend this for beginner affiliate marketers. Do this once you've got a stream of revenue, once you really want to take your profit margins out the roof, and once you're ready to diversify. But once you satisfy that checklist, it is time to produce your own products. And the best way to do this is to first see what affiliate products are selling really well. So say you have this raising chicken site and you have this one chicken feeder that is just selling like madness. People are buying this thing all the time. It's converting like crazy. That's awesome. Start your own product line and replace your affiliate links with your own product. Now you have instant traffic. You have instant buyers. You know that people want this thing and you have an email list that's hungry for content. They love you. They trust you. You provided free value to them time and time again. You provided amazing product recommendations that have been awesome for your audience. And then you have this email list that's so ready to buy because they trust you. They need this product and you are recommending it. So use your email list and start to diversify your income streams, diversify your revenue streams, make more money in different ways and jumpstart your own products. And then another strategy you should be doing is testing ads on your page. Now I don't recommend putting something like Google AdSense on your page until you're at about 10,000 views per month, anything below this. And I just don't think the income is worth the downsides. Like your site's going to be a little bit slower. You're going to have a little bit worse user experience. You might have worse email opt-in rates and you might have worse affiliate conversions. All of those are now the worst conversions is more of a maybe, but the slow site speed and the worst user experience, 100% absolutely for sure. But all the other reason I say this is because at 10,000 views per month, you can apply to ad networks. And what ad networks do is they test your ad placements, your um, ad relationships, and they work on earning more and more and more money for you. At 10,000 views per month, you can apply to Ezoic. At 50,000, you can apply to Mediavine. And at 100,000 views per month, you can apply to Ad Thrive right now. But until you can get in these networks, I just don't think it's worth it to pursue ad relationships. The loss in 
quality, the loss in speed just isn't worth it in my opinion. And, and with less than 10,000 views per month, you're not really going to be earning anything to write home about. You might have noticed here, these kind of later game affiliate strategies are all about, about diversification. They're about diversifying away from your main affiliate program with ads, with your own products. And it also worth testing different affiliate programs. So you don't need to do this until you're at a point where you're getting some pretty decent traffic. So say you're getting at least a thousand views per month, something where you can run decent split tests. But once you are at this stage, it's time to test and see which affiliate programs are you earning the most with. What you'll find is that some affiliate programs have higher payouts than others, and some affiliate programs end up converting better than others. This is why uh, the Amazon affiliate program is still so dominant. Their payouts are pretty low, but their conversions are amazing and they're so easy to use. So it's almost still kind of a no brainer. But late game, once you have some traffic, once you have some income, you want to start diverting diversifying your revenue streams, you want to start diversifying your traffic streams. So test new affiliate programs, put ads on the page, do your own products, make sure that no one holds the keys to your business. No one program dominates your income. This make sure no one program could shut you down. So you want to move away from a single source of income. You also want to move away from a single source of traffic. So Google organic is by far going to provide you the best return on investment. But once you have some ads on the page, once you have a pretty significant amount of income coming in and you can start to build systems, you can start moving to social media. I don't recommend this for early sites, but later on it can be pretty helpful because you can systematize this and give it to a VA and you're good to go. But once you're making pretty good money, start to move to social platforms, get people in a Facebook group, start a Pinterest page, um, something like that. Those are the two that are really killing it right now, but always be up to date on what tactics are working and how can I diversify my revenue and my traffic streams away from any one business where no one can just shut you down overnight. And one way to diversify is with paid ads. So once you're running your own products, you have the opportunity to run paid ads and be successful with it. I don't recommend this until you have your own products because it's super difficult, for sure not beginner level, to make an income as an affiliate while running ads. It's just very difficult. You can do it sometimes, I just don't recommend it. But if you have your own products, 100% different story. It's not that difficult to run ads at a profit. And now once you've got this one site diversified, once you've got multiple revenue streams coming in, you, you really are uh, the true authority in your niche at this point, doing really well for yourself. It's time to get into the way late game of affiliate marketing. And this is where I begin to get very excited. So the first thing I would consider, once your site is getting closer and closer and closer to your ceiling, I would consider taking that revenue, that money, and using it to fund a different project. When you're first starting out, I do recommend monogamy. Be monogamous with your business. Don't get into multiple things, multiple ventures. Be all about one thing. But once you're making money, once you're doing well for yourself, then it's time to consider using that revenue, using that profit to fund different affiliate marketing businesses or to fund different businesses that aren't affiliate marketing businesses. And there are a few ways to do this. You can build another site yourself, which is always fine. You can buy a pre-made site or a made for you site like we sell at brand builders, or you can grow through acquisitions. Now, this is where you go onto brokerages like motioninvest.com and you buy a, an income generating site. Now, these are going to run you quite a bit more, but it is a way to day one, find and buy a website that's already making an income a little bit faster than building yourself or buying a custom one from somebody. And then the last affiliate marketing strategy is to consider an exit. One thing that's cool about online businesses is that you can sell them for, right now it's between, i kind of go broad so this video doesn't get outdated, but say between like 28 and 32 times your monthly profit. So if you're making $1,000 a month, you can sell your site for say 30,000 bucks. If you're making $10,000 a month, you got a $300,000 asset. And there are a ton of people who wanna buy these things. It's a lot more liquid than I would say like real estate is right now. So the last strategy I have for you is to consider a sale. Consider exiting your business, setting up the systems where you're maximizing profit, have systems in place where it's not work intensive for the new owner, and you have diversified income and traffic streams. This is going to produce the highest possible multiple for your business so that you can get rid of this thing, make some serious dollars. So thanks so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what's your favorite affiliate marketing strategy. Thanks and have a great day.